Moses from murderer to minister. Pastor Ron Callum is in the house today, and we're going to learn some stuff about Moses. Plus, Frank the Verse Thomas in the house. Ryan's producing. I'm J. Michael McCoy. Thanks for listening to The Truth 99.3. Welcome to The View from a Pew, a conversation among Christians who are out to grow their faith by asking the simple questions, the tough questions, and the stuff you really wish your pastor would talk about. Come on now. Let's reason together. It's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so join the conversation. Call 244-0077. That's 244-0077. Now, here's your host, J. Michael McCoy. All right, good afternoon and welcome. It is another View from a Pew here on 99.3 KTIA. We thank you for listening. My special guest today is Pastor Ron, uh, who has been on uh, several times on this channel, not lately, but you probably know him from Him Time fame. Uh, what did you say, 16 years? Up 16 years, you bet. 16 years, and you can hear that show at 7 o'clock in the morning on 104.1. It's Sunday now- mornings. What did I say? Sunday mornings. What did I say? Well, you just said in the morning. Oh, Sunday morning. <laughs> I don't get up that early every day. Sunday morning, uh, 1041, <laughs> which we used to call Light 104, and now it's called More 104. More 104. And uh, so you can hear that show, Hymn Time, and you play uh, the old hymns. Hymns and light contemporary Christian music. Yeah. Oh, they it's, got it's you playing mix. that rock, m- rock and roll music no, now? No, not really rock and roll. It's, it's the light contemporary praise music. All right. And uh, you can find Ron at Crestwood Baptist Church. He is not the lead pastor. However, he does do some teaching there. In fact, every Wednesday night from 645 until about 8, he teaches a Bible study. And uh, the Bible study that he's teaching right now is the one we're going to talk about today, which is about Moses. And uh, you can do that. And again, that's Crestwood Baptist, uh, about 37th and Forest, uh, right here in Des Moines. And of course, Frank of the Verse uh, is here. Man, I tell you what, after... uh, after you beat up Luke Tim last Thursday, I, I didn't know if he'd ever like you again, but he wants to come back. Well, good. I had Bible study with him today, and he was asking about you. He wondered if, he wondered if you came to the Bible study on Wednesday, and I said, Frank doesn't go to Bible study. Uh, was, can you imagine how lively that would get? <laughs> well, he, he said, do you go to any Bible study? And I said, I don't know that. Do you do any Bible study, any small group? Uh, not for years, no. Okay. And so uh, uh, he's here for uh, uh, news and commentary. And then, of course, Ryan is producing. Now, if you haven't listened to this show in some time, I thank you for listening back. I don't know if you're listening on a podcast or you're listening live, but we uh, have some exciting news around the radio station here. Uh, The Federal Communications Commission has granted us a uh, a license to expand uh, 99.3 into the Des Moines area. And so uh, beginning here in about 30 days or so, maybe a little longer, uh, you're going to be able to hear our signal throughout our central Iowa community. And uh, there will be a little bit of a change in lineup. Uh, High noon will be Michael Mudloff from West Kirk Presbyterian Church. Then at 1 o'clock will be um, 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 Michael Brown. Thank you, Dr. Michael Brown. Ask Dr. Michael Brown, and then uh, Frank and I will move to 2 o'clock. So we'll move up an hour, and that's because we'll have Steve Dace live from 3 or from uh, yeah three to, three 5. to 5. And uh, Steve Dace, of course, has not been live in this market for many years, and he will be live, phone calls available, uh, from 3 to 5 every afternoon, and then 5 to 6, of course, Hank the uh, Bible Answer Man, and then we'll go back to our preaching all afternoon. So social commentary starting at uh, 11 o'clock with Jay Seklo, then at uh, noon with Michael Mudloff, uh, Dr. Michael Brown at 1, uh, View from the Pew at 2, and then Steve Dace live from 3 to 5. Uh, I can't tell you exactly when this happens. Uh, you know, the tower's built, the antenna's here, uh, the, we have to keep continuing to wire things up, and then we're moving all of our studios, both Webcast One Live, which is currently in the Skywalk in downtown Des Moines, and then, of course, the radio station studios, which are up in Boone. They are going to be combined together in the Merle Hay Mall, and uh, we will have uh, both webcast and radio programs uh, coming live to you from the Merle Hay Mall. And so, don't forget that plethora of uh, permits you have to comply to. Oh, oh, I, oh, and I don't want to say anything. Because mm-hmm. you'll get more. I'll, yeah, I'll just get more. But I got to tell you, I, 
I'm not just <laughs> shut up, Mac. Just be quiet. <laughs> be, be quiet. Don't Mac. Seriously, I need God's will to fully take over my mouth right now. <sighs> okay, he did that. Yeah. Pastor Ron, nice to have you here. You bet. Great to be back. Yeah. Uh, like hey, I told you, I thought maybe I offended you last time I was here. No, I, it's you been, know. It's been a while. So. Well, I took about, uh, for about a year and a half, I did, I only did view from the pew one day a week. And so um, I just, I anyway. got benched. You got benched. Well, <laughs> glad you're here. You're lead guy here today. So Moses. Moses. Tell, really? tell me, because all I know about Moses is, is uh, um, uh, what's his name? Charlton Heston did a great job. That's all I know about Moses. Well, that's what, what most people. Uh, well, but wasn't got Moses there. the cat that was put in the basket? He was. All right, and why right. was that? Well, Moses is probably the greatest man in the Old Testament, and uh, he was used by God in some really powerful ways. Reason, Isn't it believed he wrote Genesis one and two? Uh, almost certain he wrote uh, the first five books. Okay. certainly. Um, the reason he got put in the basket, he was a little baby that, uh, 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 you have to go back and understand Israel was, uh, slave and slave to Egypt. Yep. Uh, and the Pharaoh was cracking down on them. So they told the, the, the midwives, uh, kill all the little babies that were born little boys, particularly. And, uh, his mother was a believer obviously, and said, we're not going to do that. And so they hid him and, and, uh, then she came to, uh, obviously he was growing to the point where she was going to have to do something. And I think it's pretty obvious that she knew that Pharaoh's daughter, uh, went down to the Nile river at a particular spot, uh, to take a, a bath every day. And so she, they, they made a little basket and they put Moses in that basket and floated him down the river so that uh, the Pharaoh's daughter would find him. And then she adopted him, took him into her home. And then, you know, he grew up uh, thinking he was the son of Pharaoh and he was probably the heir apparent to the throne. Now, what, what did God mean in the comparison of Jesus and Moses? in the fact that the, the powers to be both said, kill him as a baby, and they both escaped and became incredible men of the Bible. Well, uh, yeah, Jesus said that uh, he, that Moses had predicted a prophet like me will arise, and, and then, of course, Jesus took that uh, and, and, and elevated it. Um, there's probably some parallels there. I hadn't really thought about that, but uh, uh, the fact is that God oversaw uh, saving Moses' life. And uh, as I said, he was probably the heir apparent to the throne of Egypt. And uh, then God intervened and revealed to him the fact that, hey, you were actually a Hebrew. And, uh, and the Bible says that Moses chose not to follow the, what would have been the normal path of becoming the next Pharaoh and identified himself with the people of God. How did God reveal that to Moses? Well, that who knows? Uh, who knows, yeah. All right. Somehow or another, uh, he, he understood that by the time he had yeah. grown. It was on page 232 of the script <laughs> yeah. that Richard Widmark, or not Widmark, uh, Charlton Heston. Yeah. Do, do you know why that is? Uh, no. No. Wow. He revealed it at the burning, something at the burning bush. Well, that was many years later. You know, yeah. Moses yeah. was, was uh, probably close to 80 years old when that happened. So Moses goes back to uh, uh, let my people go. And he fights to get yeah, the well, Israelites. You've got some intervening time there that you have to lay some foundation. Understand? All right, that go ahead. He and we're, here's where the murder came in. He uh, he probably thought, you know, I'm 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 just conjecturing here. Probably thought that uh, hey, I'm I'm God's chosen to deliver the people, so uh, I'll uh, I'll take this ball and run with it. And uh, he saw a, an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, and so he uh, applied his the, his own uh, pressure, and uh, he killed the Egyptian. Mm. And uh, then it became known that he had done that, and uh, Pharaoh found out and put a, a price on his head. So Moses had to run away as a fugitive, and so he committed murder. And that's why I, I titled this uh, study From Murder to Ministry. Yeah. And uh, here Moses becomes this, this great uh, the lawgiver, great man in the Old Testament, and yet he started out uh, his, his adult life as a murderer. And, uh, well, anyway, he spent 40 years there on the backside of the desert and, uh, uh, thinking that, uh, uh, 
I'm a nobody. And someone said that he spent the first 40 years of his life thinking he was somebody, the second 40 years of his life thinking he was nobody, and then the last 40 years of his life finding out what God can do with a nobody. Mm. And so he meets God at the burning bush, and God says, uh, I am that I am. And then he sends him back. He said, I want you to deliver my people. And I've heard their prayers. I know how miserable they are and how they've been mistreated. And I'm going to set them free. And I'm going to keep the promise that I gave their father Abraham 400 years earlier. Well, you what? see a lot of, a lot of uh, great uh, images there. I, I heard a minister say one time that uh, Moses was trying to kill the Egyptians one at a time. Instead of being patient and waiting on God to swallow them up in the Red Sea. I, I never heard that, but uh, there probably was, was some thought there that he, he thought, hey, I, 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 here I am. I'm the deliverer. Yeah. What so, uh, uh, Was Moses alone for those 40 years? He got married. He had kids, worked okay. for his father-in-law, tending sheep. Okay. Uh, and uh, so he, he, he thought that part of my life is over. I blew it. I'm no good. I'm, I'm useless. I'm just going to live out my years back here in, uh, in obscurity. And, uh, God had a great, has a great way of taking that, which is obscure and putting it on and, uh, using it as a platform for greatness. Ron Callum, uh, pastor Ron Callum is here. He hosts him time every Sunday morning, seven o'clock at more 104.1. He is also a member and teacher at Crestwood Baptist Church at 37th and Forest in Des Moines. And for those of you that are interested in learning more about Moses and uh, being a part of a Wednesday night Bible study, is it uh, both genders? Oh, yes. Anybody, okay. Anybody's welcome. Yeah. 645 to 8 o'clock. Probably no Lutherans, though, right? You don't want us <laughs> hanging around. Anybody can come. And uh, currently he's doing the series Murder to Ministry, talking about Moses. So Moses is almost 80. And he's doing the shepherding thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And what made him go to that bush? He was out ten, just tending sheep. It was just an ordinary day. All right. And he sees this bush that's on fire but not being consumed. And, and the Bible says God caught his attention. And when he saw it, in fact, it literally says, when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, then God said, you know, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. And then God revealed himself in a new way that he had not revealed himself before in, 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 with his name, which we transliterate to Jehovah, Yahweh, I am that I am. And so God took the initiative to come to Moses, reveal himself. And when Moses responded properly, then God said, now here's what I want you to do. Tell me, tell me where the I am comes from. I mean, I know where it comes from with Jesus, but we're we're a few thousand well, that's, years. Well, that's the, the name we call it Jehovah in English. Hebrew is probably Yahweh or Y H W H. Uh, it is a verb that means to be, and so it's translated in the English "I am," and God is just saying, "Whatever you need, I am." And that's where Jesus took it then and applied it specifically. Yeah. I am the door, I'm the good shepherd, I'm the life, and so forth. Why doesn't, uh, I mean, there probably is no real answer for this, but why doesn't God reveal himself to everyone like this? I mean, we got a good young atheist guy that comes in here, a really sincere guy, but he's he's a child of a father and a, and a grandfather who are both pastors, but he's now become an atheist. And he'd like God to reveal to him that he really is what he says he is so that he could believe. Why does God not reveal himself to everyone like he like he done to Paul, Moses, different ones like that? Of his power, his sovereignty, his omnipotence, so everybody knows. Well, it's because he revealed himself to Moses and to Paul that way, and it's recorded for us in the Word. Bible says of itself that it is inspired by God. The word literally, God breathed. It's like you see your breath on a cold winter morning <laughs> or this morning uh, here in Des Moines. But it, God revealed himself through his word. But he looks at the heart. And I, he says here, when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside, when he saw that uh, Moses was paying attention, then he spoke. All right, we're coming back. Pastor Ron Callum right here on The Truth, 99.3.
It's Murder to Minister, the story of Moses. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, Reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. it in the back view or the front view it's your voice we want to hear the phone lines are open so call 244-0077 now here's j michael mccoy all right welcome back 21 minutes after the hour of uh three o'clock we thank you for listening live today if you are if you're listening on a podcast we sure appreciate that uh, you can find all of our podcasts at uh, macmccoy.com. That's M-A-C-M-C-K-O-Y.com. Uh, find me on Facebook. Uh, uh, there's a hundred places you can find me. I'm walking down the street. Yeah, walking down the street. And Burger and, King. Yeah. <laughs> and he gives out his personal yeah. phone number, yeah. too. Uh. Yeah, 229-6292. Uh, uh, you can put that up on the screen if you want, Ryan. I don't – I mean, I'm just – God brought me into this ministry to be bold, and, and I, there's no reason for me to hide. My wife asked that I not give my home address because I did that once. <laughs> she got so mad at me because uh, she just imagined, you know, the things that would be spray-painted on our garage. So, uh, But I'm, I'm here for you. I'm, I came alongside a good brother this morning who is suffering, and it's uh, certainly what God has asked me to do to be transparent and reveal uh, myself and and what he's done with me in my life and uh, if you haven't listened to one of my radio programs in over five years um, I, I'm not the same guy uh, I got mugged by Jesus uh-huh. and uh, I can't explain it to you uh, I can only tell you what happened and uh, everything uh, that it talks about in Romans 
and Ephesians about how uh, God comes in and your spirit and the Holy Spirit, uh, Romans uh, eight sixteen, how how they come together. Um, it happened, and I, I can't explain to you why. I would have told you for years and years that I was saved, that I didn't need no stinking Jesus because I was a God guy, and what do I need with the Son if I've got the Father? And somebody would ask me, what about that Bible verse, nobody gets to the Father but through me, and I'd put my fingers together and say, I'm J. Michael McCoy. God and I, we're like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'd go before him in Judgment Day, and he'd, I'd say, I did pretty good, didn't I, God? He said, well, you kind of blew the first one. So what do you mean? <laughs> Thou shalt have no other gods but me. I said, you're the only God I have. Well, you, you found this Jesus guy. And I'd say, well, you sent me there. And he'd say, I didn't send you anywhere. And so I had nightmares about that. And, and one day, it just all changed. And uh, it was a uh, microwave moment that has been a slow crock pot cooking since. And uh, I was just telling some friends this morning that just sanctification is just, if, if my right arm and fist is, is God's will and that's like a piece of chalk, He's just soaking up the ink of all my sin and all my troubles and uh, so thankful to have that uh, relationship. Uh, uh, Wish he wouldn't have waited till I was 50, but that's his plan, right? Well, you know, uh, if you pick fruit when it's green, it spoils. The fruit had to mature. Well, boy, I tell you what, I'm done. I'm I am well done now. Now he's he's totally refurbishing you from the inside out. Yeah, that's and he, good. He wanted me to <laughs> he and I, I really thought I, I could do this quietly and I could continue to do my political show and do all that. And there's no way he, he just, was waiting like, on yeah. you to quit wandering. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Quit wandering. You, the the Israelites wandered for forty years. Moses was in the wilderness for forty years. I mean, we as I don't know men particularly seem to have to get forty years under our belt before we really before figure we something out. Before we really know it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not. I don't want to get off the subject That's of Moses. Right. I want to get back here. But in your theology, in what you believe, and what the Bible says, what did I have to do to receive salvation? Uh, what every person has to do, and that is become like a little child and just believe. Okay. The word believe in the New Testament means to believe into, to make a deposit. You just had to come to the place where you said, here it is, Lord, I put it in your hands. And and however you said that, uh, God knows your heart. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I went through much of that same thing. I grew up in church and uh, um, thought, you know, I guess I guess I thought I was good enough. Yeah. And then I started reading my Bible, and all of a sudden Jesus became so alive to me yeah. that I just, uh, wow. And I didn't say, you know, I, I didn't know I was born again, uh, transformed, regenerated. I, I didn't know any any of those things. I just knew that I had I was cleansed. Something had happened. And then I found the verse in First John that says, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The word cleanse literally means, is the word catharsis. He jump starts our heart. I have a, a good pastor of mine who says, who answers that question, what did I have to do or what do I have mm-hmm. to do to receive Christ uh, or salvation? And his answer is uh, nothing. nothing. If you feel like you need to do something, then accept it. But whether you accept it or reject it, when it's your time, it's mm-hmm. your time. And it's his belief that we can't, we cannot turn down uh, a call from from God. Now that's kind of getting into Calvinism. I know a little bit from the elect, um, but but it's interesting that when uh, I, I I I Pastor Ron, I couldn't turn it down. I mean, when he came to me, it, it, I would be an idiot of <laughs> yeah. the, but seriously, uh, the yeah. idiot of the uh, highest standard yeah. for me to say, because he came to me in a, I call it a dream. Uh, I have a good pastor friend of mine that says, God doesn't come to you in dreams because the accuser can also live in that space. So if God comes to you when your eyes are closed, it's called a vision. That's just what he says. And he came to me in a vision and uh, there was no way I could turn it down. Just no way. Um, and I've heard people who, you know, who say they struggled and turned it down over and over and over. And if that works well for them, that's great. Well, God deals with us as individuals. But Jesus was asked that question, what must I do to be saved? He said in John uh, six twenty nine, 
Uh, he said, this is the work of God that you believe on the one he has sent. Do you, do you think that we receive the Holy Spirit and then we receive salvation? Then we realize that Jesus has mugged us? Or does Jesus mug us and then with that comes the gift of the Holy Spirit? Because well, the apostles didn't they, get the Holy Spirit for forty well, days. But that was that was a that was a whole different. That was a, a that acts as a transitional book, moving from the Old to the New Testament. Okay. So, um, since since the time of the, the apostles, when you receive Christ into your life, you receive the Holy Spirit. Then you get into the whole thing of the fullness of the Spirit, and uh, the fullness of the Spirit is just basically turning over your life to the Holy Spirit. Everyone who is a believer has the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit doesn't have all of us. And so that, that's where you get into, and you start splitting hairs and, uh, what that does is confuse people. Yeah. Yeah. And God's not the author of confusion. Do you think you can have the Holy Spirit before repentance? Well, I, I'm going to say no, but however, that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit's not working in your life because he's the one that draws you to Christ. And so uh, he is he is active there. Well, I believe the act of repentance, the Holy Spirit uses that to pave the way in your life yeah. for acceptance. Yeah. Well, of, the Holy Spirit justification. The Holy Spirit's at work all around us. Uh but co- but the 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 work of the Holy Spirit in saving us and and uh, and then conforming us to the image of Christ is, is something different. Uh, there's the intensity of the Holy Spirit uh, taking charge in our lives, and that comes as we, when we believe. Jesus said, "When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you uh, and, and and when you, what he meant was when you receive me as your Savior." See, I've always, I've always wondered if the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's it's kind of the thing. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Something had to come first. So did I receive the Holy Spirit or the beginning of it, and that made the scales fall from my eyes, and then all of a sudden I saw Christ for what he well, was? Jesus said, John 16, Jesus said that uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit's work is to convict of sin and righteousness and judgment. So he's at work in our hearts, and all of that is just paving the way for us to, to get the drift, for the eyes to be opened, and to see that Jesus is who he said he was, and he is what we need. Did, did, when I got mugged by Jesus, and here's the reason I call it mugged, and I didn't even think about that. That just came to me because what happens when we get mugged? Everything we value is taken from us. Well, at the time when I got mugged, he took my pride. He took my ego. He took my uh, self-centeredness. He took my idols. Uh, and most importantly, he took away my um, guilt and shame. So he robbed me of all those things that I thought were important as a human to have. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I didn't need any of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, so did that happen exactly when God had planned it to? Or has he been knocking on that door since I was Well, yeah, Jesus years said, if anyone hear my voice, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. Uh, you've seen that famous picture of yeah. Jesus standing, and there's no, no doorknob. doorknob. Yeah, and you've got to open the door. When you open the door, he comes in, and that's when he takes takes over and takes those those issues, uh, and, and he begins to transform them. Like someone said, when God takes something away from you, it's not that he's trying to rob you, but that he is w- wanting to give you something better. Yeah. So did 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 I receive, or do most people receive the Holy Spirit first? And then the 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 scales are lifted from our eyes, or or I don't know. I guess it's not important. Well, yeah, you, you you're dealing with semantics here. Uh, when you receive Christ as your Savior, we say He comes to live in our hearts. What, actually, what the Holy Spirit comes to live in our hearts is same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead gives life to our mortal bodies. So uh, Jesus comes into us in the form of the Holy Spirit. And then he opens our eyes to, to mm. see what has happened to us. Now, mm. why do they call me the verse? It's because I have the text for you. It's Ephesians 1.13. 
you're sealed you're you receive you're sealed by the spirit after belief you're sealed by the spirit after belief ephesians 1 13. so in other words i had to believe first so why didn't I believe yesterday or the day before or a year before or five years before? That's part of that wandering around in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. But why, why, why then? I mean, I have my answer, but I think it's different than your answer. Well, not everybody has your experience. I mean, not everybody comes to Christ the way you had to. You were a stubborn, yes. hard-headed, yes. prideful yes. person, and yes. you didn't want to bow, yield, and kneel to anybody, right. including including God, in, in essence. But see, I thought I had, I had this great relationship. Well, I know, but, but, but when, mm -hmm. when, when Christ revealed himself to you, you saw him in, you know, that he's a reality, and you accepted it when you, when you saw it. But, but you can't be sealed with the Spirit until you believe. Believed is an act mm -hmm. on our part. Mm -hmm. Well, someone has counted 33 different things that either happen to us or become true of us the moment we receive Christ. And one of them is you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Mm. You're also baptized with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you're regenerated. You're forgiven. Uh, you know, all, all of those things. They're, they're simultaneous things that happen to you because you're birthed into the kingdom. All right is our guest. He is a teaching pastor at Crestwood Baptist Church, 37th and Forest, a uh, Bible study every Wednesday night, men and women, a, uh, 645 to 8. Uh, right now he's teaching on Moses, murder to ministry. And we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about Moses when we come back live here on The Truth, 99.3, powered by webcast1live.com. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about, is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee, 
on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. If you sit in the back pew or the front pew, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, 22 minutes for the top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News. And then, of course, Michael Mudloff, True Blue, you've heard. I'll tell you again, this radio station is expanding into Des Moines and all of central Iowa. That's going to happen here in, uh, I don't know, three, four weeks, depending on the weather. Uh, we got to hang some steel. we got to hang an antenna. we got to build some new studios. But all that's in place. It's been approved by the Federal Communications Commission. When that happens, uh, you will hear us everywhere across central Iowa. Now, starting May 4th, we're going to start our new lineup. And our new lineup uh, from a noon, well, 11 o'clock on is Jay Seklo, as it is now. Then at noon, uh, high noon, who better at high noon than Pastor Michael Mudloff from Westkirk Presbyterian Church. Uh, then at 1 o'clock is Ask Dr. Brown. And then at 2 o'clock will be Frank and I with a view from a pew. And 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock will be Steve Dace Live. And Steve Dace has not been live in this market in afternoon drive for several years. And so he's returning, and we're uh, just humbled uh, to be his home. And then, of course, from 5 to 6, uh, Hank the answer, uh, the Bible Answer Man. So, and before that and after that, uh, uh, some of the best preachers in the business, R.C. Sproul, John McDonald, uh, all the best. And we will be, uh, Central Iowa's only, only 24-7 preaching and teaching and social comment station. Are there other people who run spiritual shows? Yes, my guest today, Pastor Ron, has been doing hymn time on uh, 104.1 for how many years? And before that, it was uh, 1460, right? No, it, it was uh, it was light one hundred four point one. It's now always it, been one hundred four point one. More one hundred four point one. Yeah. But didn't you do it on AM for a while back in no. the old days? No, not no. Me. Okay, no. there was another program called Him Time, but, but that wasn't you. That's not no. All right, so you know there's other stations that play uh, faith based religious programming. Uh, we'll be the only one. We will not interrupt the middle of Steve Dace to go to a Cubs game or an Iowa Cubs game. Or Sunday, we won't interrupt uh, John McDonald to go to a Kansas City Chiefs game. And I'm not saying those aren't important. We just think that the Word of God ought to be spoken 24-7 on this frequency. That's what he gave it to us for, and that's what we're going to do. Amen. So uh, uh, glad to be coming into the market. Glad to have Steve on board. Um, uh, do you think you can follow? Uh, do you think you can proceed, Steve Dace? You... He's more right than I am, wouldn't you say? Farther right than you Farther are? Farther right. He, he I uses, don't know, Frank. He, he uses the term sodomy marriage, and I don't think I've uh, went down that road yet. Well, yeah, I would say that uh, he's more pharisaical than you are. I'm more of a Sadducee. <laughs> well, maybe you're both pharisaical. I don't know. <laughs> you're both really heavy into the law. Both heavy into the law. So uh, glad to have everybody. It's going to be a, a wonderful uh, trek. And I can tell you that uh, uh, for this cowboy, uh, I thought I was done. I was going to retire. I did retire. I mean, when I built this studio, this was part-time just for me. And then other folks came along. And then God brought me uh, into a relationship with Chris Roloff and Stu Epperson Jr. and Mike Carbone. And uh, uh, Ron, I know how you know this feels. I get to finish well. Yeah. Yeah, that's You know, I get to finish my life uh, preaching the Word of God. And bringing souls to Jesus Christ. you got a Christ. great story about that. I'll tell you after a bit. Okay, I want to hear it. Well, <laughs> just tell me now. Because we were going to well, Moses anyway. We'll go to well, Moses. Moses, the... uh, Moses felt like he was he was done. He yeah. spent 40 years tending his father-in-law's sheep and uh, thought he'd probably uh, just die out there in the wilderness. He's 80 years old. He meets God in the burning bush. God says, uh, not done with you yet. I'm going to send you back, and uh, I want you to uh, deliver my people. And he was eight. And he was 80 years old at that point. And uh, so he spent the next, uh, well, and, and because of their rebellion and everything, uh, it, he wound up leading the people in the wilderness for 40 years. 
And so he spent another 40 years doing what he thought. So he was 120. He was 120 years old. And he said that that his eye hadn't dimmed or he hadn't lost any of his vigor or anything like that. But my story is an interesting one about finishing well. Okay. And uh, in 1954, I'm a baseball fan, so I like uh, illustrations. In 1954, the baseball season opening game featured the Braves, who were Milwaukee at that time, and, uh, and the Reds. Cincinnati. And uh, in the opening game, the uh, Reds, one of their players, was a man by the name of Jim Greengrass. Greengrass. He went, he went four, by, four for four. Okay. Four hits. Four at-bats, four hits. Okay. There was a rookie that started on the Braves. It went 0 for 4. Mm. His name was Hank Aaron. Mm. Who ever heard of Jim Greengrass? Nobody. But everybody's heard of Because Hank 20 Aaron. years later, Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's home run record. Yeah. It's a matter, not how you start necessarily, it's a matter of how you, how finish. you finish. And you finish well. And for Moses, he finished well because he obeyed God. He had uh, one little blip on the radar screen, and God said, that's going to keep you from going into the promised land. I'll let you see it, but you can't go in. And that shows us the gravity of disobedience. And uh, God is no respecter of persons, and we can offend God, and we can lose some of our rewards uh, when when we allow sin uh, to creep back in. So, so you don't think Moses is in heaven? Yeah. Okay. Well, the promised land was the land of uh, Israel, the land of Oh, promise. oh, oh, oh. But he's in heaven. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, his offense was striking saying, the rock. Man, I'm in trouble. If Moses didn't get in, I'm just shot. <laughs> now, his offense was striking the rock twice is basically what got him in trouble. Well, struck, he's, he was told to strike the, the rock the first time. Well, he struck it out of anger. and But he was told the first time to strike the rock, and he did. And what was happening there is God was leading the people of Israel as, as a cloud by day and a fire, pillar of fire by night. So the cloud probably went over in front of the rock, and Moses struck the rock through the cloud. That's a picture of Christ. Mm-hmm. First Corinthians says the rock was Christ. It's a picture of Christ. Then when the occasion arose again, they needed water, and God said, speak to the rock. Moses was angry, and he struck the rock again, breaking the picture that God says Christ died once for all. And so it's just a matter of uh, being arrogant and not specifically obeying what God said to do. So it was like uh, Moses trying to crucify Christ twice. No, that, was, that was the essence of what he did, yeah. Uh, Pastor Ron, uh, let me ask you this. Um, so when God told Moses he couldn't go into the promised land, where'd he go? No, he died in the wilderness, and he had later, of course, appeared to Jesus— uh, right, right. Jesus, uh, Moses, and Elijah appeared to Christ before his transfiguration. Um, but so, uh, yeah, he, he and, and Jesus said in that instance, that God is the God of of the living, and so Moses is in heaven certainly. Yeah. And Satan fought and contested for his body, and it's the uh, according to the Bible yeah. that Christ alone knows where he was buried. Right. And later transfigured right. him to heaven. That was just so they didn't uh, make a, a monument out of it and right. uh, worship the the spot. Right. So, so we we don't know where Moses was buried. And God, no, Bible says God buried him. So God buried him. Yeah. And uh, so, but he he did uh, lead the people to the brink of the promised land, and then of course his uh, lieutenant Joshua was the one who led them into the promised land. Of course, then the Bible says Joshua is a picture of Christ, and the promised land is a picture of the abundant life that we can enjoy as believers, and Jesus is the one who takes us into the promised land, into the abundant life. What do you know about this speech impediment that uh, Moses had, that he was kind of fear- he said he fearful, was, of, fearful of talking? He said he was slow of tongue. Uh, I, I really don't know because in the book of Acts it said that he was eloquent and that uh, he had, of course, the advantage of all the training of the Egyptian uh, schooling and, and every educational system. So uh, don't know exactly what that was. Did he lose something being in the wilderness for 40 years? And... I don't know. Pastor Ron Callum is our guest today. Uh, Pastor Ron hosts a show called Him Time. And that's at 7 a.m. every Sunday on Moore 104.1. He also leads a uh, uh, anyone's welcome Bible study at Crestwood Baptist Church, 
37-17 Forest. Uh, Wednesday night, 645 to 8 o'clock, and you've been getting just a little bit of a tease of what his current Bible study is about, and it's about Moses, called Murder to Ministry. We'll come back with more from Pastor Ron, from Frank, Ryan, and myself, next here on KTIA, The Truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coach with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, Reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, welcome. Uh, Ten minutes for the top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News, and then Pastor Michael Mudloff from Westkirk Presbyterian Church and uh, True Blue. And again, in the new lineup, uh, Michael Mudloff is going to take the prestigious position of High Noon. Uh, and High Noon has always been one of the best times to come on the radio. That's why Paul Harvey was on at 12 noon uh, every day for uh, I don't know how many decades. But he's going to kick off our afternoon here in Iowa with uh, True Blue, and then 1 o'clock will be Ask Dr. Brown, and then at 2 o'clock, Frank and I with The View from a Pew, 3 to 5 live in the afternoon, drive for the first time in many years, uh, Steve Dace, back on 99.3 as he was so long ago, uh, doing his uh, afternoon drive show. And then at 5 o'clock, of course, it's uh, Hank the Bible Answer Man. So that's our new lineup. I don't know when it's going to start. I think, well, I do know when it's going to start. It's going to start May 4th. I'm not sure exactly when we'll be at our expanded power and coverage of Central Iowa, but we will cover uh, all of Central Iowa and more uh, and be uh, Des Moines only 24-hour, seven-day-a-week, 24-7, gospel preaching and teaching and social commentary. What a great opportunity. That's just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we had KWKY for a lot of years who who did a great job. And then the, the uh, Diocese of the Catholic Church bought that. Mm-hmm. And now that's uh, strictly Catholic programming. Mm-hmm. We've had some part-time stations here and there uh, play biblical music or have a preacher mm-hmm. on or whatever. Uh, but nobody's ever done it. Yeah. You know, nobody's ever done it from the time the sun comes up till the time the sun comes up. And so uh, we're going to give it a shot, see if we can make it work. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think yeah. God will bless us. Yeah. I really do. Um, did you see the movie Moses? The most recent one uh, for for gods and kings or something like that. It yeah, was called. they they did such a slash job on on the scripture. That's what really instigated me doing this uh, Bible study uh, on on the book of Moses and tell the truth about the book of Moses. And uh, let me go back to something we said a little while ago about uh, God revealing Himself. He revealed Himself through the pages of Scripture, and He continues to do that. 
And uh, this whole story of Israel coming out of Egypt, uh, going into the promised land, is a picture of uh, what happens in the life of a believer. We come out of uh, Egypt, it's a picture of the world. We come out of, of a worldly, lost lifestyle and into a relationship with the Lord. And then he takes us deeper and in, into uh, more the land of the life of blessing. And in 1 Corinthians 10, Paul uses that image and he says, these people were baptized into Moses. In other words, they were identified with Moses as God's leader, God's uh, prophet that led them uh, into uh, the relationship with him. And then he makes a great statement in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 6. These things, the things like going through the Red Sea and, and the manna in the wilderness and all that, these things happened as examples for us that we should not crave evil things as they did. And the word examples there is used several times in Scripture, and it uh, means like, a, uh, like the image stamped on a coin. It's a pattern. It's a tracing. It's an example to follow. So he says, these things that are written are given to us as examples for us to follow so that we can enjoy the same kind of relationship with Jehovah God, the God of, of the burning bush, the I am that appeared to Moses. And one of the things that really upset me about that, that uh, most recent movie was they, had, they portrayed God as an 11-year-old boy with an English accent. And, uh, uh, and I, really, I really took offense at that because God was so holy, he told Moses, take your shoes off. You're standing on holy ground in well, my and, presence. And wasn't it Moses? He uh, told him to block his eyes because it would yeah, be... He said, you can't see my face and live. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Well, but overall, I'm glad that Hollywood at least is trying. Yeah. You yeah, know, now yeah. you've got, you've got uh, uh, the couple. What's the name of the couple? Downey. She played Ro uh, the Roma, angel. Roma Downey. And, Roma Downey uh, and her husband. Uh, Mark. Mark Burnett. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're doing the AD series. Yep, they're doing and again, they're taking some liberties with it, but, but at least they're talking about it. And if it does nothing else but get people into the word for themselves, that's a good thing. Now, was it Russell Crowe that played Noah or? Yeah, I think so. Moses. Yeah, and he, play, he played Noah. Okay. Yeah. And they played fast and loose they with that one, They took a few too. liberties with that one, too, huh? <laughs> But at least it, what it shows is the fact that God is at work in the hearts of people. Uh, and, uh, and so if, if the enemy wants to muddy the waters, uh, God's still greater. And it's like with your radio station. God's raising you up, raising this radio station up uh, to, to broadcast his truth. Mm -hmm. And it's truth that's, that sets people free. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, that's what... That's what we call ourselves, the yeah, truth. That's great. And we don't say that with any pride or boastfulness. Like it says in Romans, no. do not boast. We, we just say it. This is the tr we know this to be the truth. Well, you're revealing the truth. And the truth, the word literally means that which makes itself known. And so the truth will reveal the truth. Well, I tell you what, Brian, it's, uh, you and I have known each other a long time, but it's, uh, uh, it's a wonderful thing uh, to be where you've been so long, and that is just to know the truth. Amen. You know, and That's not right. be stumbling around and mumbling and bumbling and stumbling. And um, uh, I, 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 I always, you know, I, I had people, <laughs> Frank, I brought up, you know, I was raised Episcopalian. And I'd have people ask me, well, are you a Christian? And I'd get offended because, you know, being offended is a choice. I'd get offended, and I'd push back a little bit, and my body language would tell you that you offended me, and I'd say, heavens? No. Well, I wouldn't say heavens. I'd say something yeah. else. <laughs> I'd say, no, uh, I'm Episcopalian. And I'd say, you Christians are way too happy. I don't get you. And I, and I thought you had to work so hard. I thought it was about this works thing that, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't spit and chew anymore, and I, I couldn't tell an off-color joke, and, and I couldn't drink alcohol anymore, and I had to do this, and I had to do that, and I had to do this. And what I learned is I don't have to do anything. I get to do those things. Amen. There you go. And all those other things, I'm so glad to shed, rather mm. than carry them like, you know, baggage. You were in bondage to those things. Absolutely. Yeah. But I didn't know that. I didn't know I was in bondage. I thought I was living living high on the hog, living the good life. I, I'm yeah. I'm glad he mugged me when he did. Amen. Yeah. I sure wish he would have done it yeah. 40 years ago, but he did it when he did it, and here I am, and here you are. When the fullness of time came. Yeah. 
All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow, Michael Mudloff, and we're going to talk about um, the elect. And, uh, Frank, you're going to take the day off and, and work on the car. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, then f- Friday, Davey Bloom will be back on, Pastor Bloom, one of my favorite guys, and we're going to talk about the will of God. Mm. And we're going to talk about your will, his will, the accuser's will, and this funny thing called free will, which, by the way, folks, isn't free at all. It's the most expensive will there is out there. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Until I do see you tomorrow, remember to think of that person that you can't forgive. They're living rent-free in that five inches between your ears. Tonight on your knees, with your hands together, raising your voice to Jesus, give that relationship to Jesus and forgive them. And then you will be forgiven as you forgive. I'll see you in church.